Rob, thank you. I, I'm, thank you all for coming. I'm, I think the most important thing for the future of our uh, young people and students is the involvement of their parents. So for those of you, I know it was already mentioned, those who are teachers, but the toughest job is the parenting job, and the one that's also the most fulfilling and the most uh, rewarding, if you will. But I, I really do appreciate the sponsorship of, an, of a meeting like this because although I'm not here from NASA as a recruiter, I do have forms if you want to fill out. Um, I need to tell you that it uh, was mentioned. I, I work now f after a career with, in a lot of different things with, with SAIC. And Science Applications International Corporation is a STEM organization. We employ thousands of scientists, technicians and technologists, engineers, mathematicians, analysts of all kinds, and we provide services that help people make the world better, make better decisions, make better understand how things work, help cure cancer, literally. And for us and for the area that I'm in is we help NASA keep the human spaceflight program safer. That is right now as well as the design of future vehicles. So that's what we do. That's, it's important. I think it's a great mission. It is a cool mission. And I'm really happy to be doing that, although not maybe quite as happy as when I was flying in space. So to understand why an astronaut thinks STEM and science and technology and engineering is cool, I'm going to have to ask you to use your imaginations and get out of this auditorium gymnasium and put yourself in the astronaut's perspective. That is, let's all go into space for just a minute in our thought process. Because even as we sit here on Earth, I'm in, the, in here in this classroom, we're actually not standing still. We're traveling at about 1,000 miles to the east, 1,000 miles an hour going to the east because of the Earth's rotation. Think about where we are sitting on the Earth, the latitude above the equator, and the Earth's rotation once around. It's an 8,000-mile planet, 8,000-mile diameter. So if you have a globe in your classroom, think about the size of that ball being about this big, it represents a scale model of the Earth with a diameter of 8,000 miles. Now, flying above the Earth, right now today, there are six astronauts and cosmonauts from different countries on the International Space Station. They are 250 miles above the Earth, well outside the atmosphere. They're going 17,500 miles an hour to the east, orbiting the Earth. They're actually falling around the Earth, but the speed of their, of their flight means that the curvature of their trajectory never comes back down into the atmosphere. They're going so fast, they just fall around, which is why if we were in space and I let go of this microphone, it would just float in front of me. I'm not going to try it today because we're running out of microphones as it is. <laughs> so here we are on the Earth rotating, going 1,000 miles an hour, or we're up in space, and some of you I hope will be in the future, at 17,500 miles an hour, if we looked, let's see, the Earth is also going around the sun at about 66,000 miles an hour, speeding through space in its orbit around the sun. And by the way, the sun is going about a half a million miles an hour when you consider it's going around the center of the uh, galaxy and the Milky Way, and the galaxy is going around its local group at even faster than that. So hold on to your seats. It's, it's, it is a ride. And what I want you to think about with all that motion and going on and is it, it is a fact. That's what's happening. We don't see it. But put yourself in the point of view of the astronaut. The, the Earth is this big, 8,000-mile ball. We're 250 miles above it, which means we're actually to scale about that far above the surface of the Earth. So whether you're thinking about taking pictures of the Earth or looking at the Earth from space or from airplanes or from wherever, You'd have to take that globe in the classroom and get your eye down about that far above it to have the same point of view that the astronaut does. And if you could accommodate the focus, some of us who are older need a little help from the lenses, you would see not the entire Earth, but the Earth would be about half of everything you could see. And you're going five miles a second over the surface. So if you want to take a picture of your hometown, you better get your camera all set, get the lens all right, Figure out, uh, it's cloudy today in your hometown, so wait for the next orbit. But it, things move fast. The point of view that I want to really get 
and make a point of is though that everywhere else you look, if you look out the other windows of the spaceship, the station or the shuttle or whatever, there's nothing. I mean, there's black space for essentially forever until you get to the stars. It's nothing there until you look in the direction of the Earth. And when you do, what you see is everything we have, everything we love, and you recognize that you're on a spaceship that you've worked all your career to understand how it works, how the power works, how much food you have, how you purify your water, how do you understand your, keep your environment safe for, to breathe. And when you look out the window at the Earth, you're looking at a spaceship with five billion crew members going 66,000 miles an hour around the sun and a half a million miles an hour around the center of the galaxy. It is a spaceship. And in order for it to continue being a good spaceship, it takes a lot of people understanding how it works. And that takes people who are young being curious about how things work. As simple as when we take for granted, when you throw the switch on the wall, the lights come on. Most kids at a certain age don't understand why that works. Quite frankly, a lot of kids at a certain age don't understand that when they get french fries for lunch, that there was actually a potato involved. <laughs> so how things work and being curious is the key to understanding how the spaceship works and to understanding what's so, what's so cool is knowing that you can change things. Once you know how it works, you can figure out how to wait, make it better. And that is really where we make the world better. So to me, that's from the astronaut's point of view. Um, we are all astronauts. We just have different sized spaceships sometimes. And we got to work on the next generation of crew members. And that, as a parent, is really your job. And it's stimulating curiosity. Um, my parents, when I was little, my dad built things. And he never denied me access to tools. So I have some scars. <laughs> and I, but I would take things apart. My mom always wondered why the vacuum cleaner was in 17 pieces. And it was supposed <laughs> to have three. But encouragement of curiosity is the key. And for that, I thank you all for being here, and thank you for the opportunity uh, to represent NASA and SAIC.